it's um, it's very nice to be here tonight. Um, far, far away, the, the protagonist, when the book begins, is 14 years old. But when he was six or seven, he made the mistake of letting a friend know that he hears voices. He, he calls it a strange whispering. And if he presses his temple, he can hear the voices more clearly. It's a small town, and uh, people believe different things, um, that he's too suggestible, uh, that maybe he's picking up a distant radio station through a silver tooth filling. But mostly they just think that Jeremy is strange and that he does not hear voices. In fact, he does hear voices, and one of the voices he hears is the voice of Jakob Grimm, who presumptuously, presumptuously enough is the narrator of this book. So I'm going to read a bit. As a mortal man, I was known as Jacob Grimm. Yes, the very one. With my younger brother, Wilhelm, I lived once in Germany, in the village of Steinau, in the kingdom of Hesse. Both of us were linguists, but our collection of household stories, fairy tales, as they are now commonly called, is what you doubtless know. I have been dead since the Saturday afternoon in September 1863 when I saw the elm tree in the garden dissolve into nothing, and also the window before which I sat, and the wicker chair, and my niece, who had just inquired what I, Lieber Uncle, would like for tea. I lay with a dead tongue and a dead right hand. The next day, I stopped breathing. In death, I expected to be greeted by Wilhelm, who had died before me. All of our lives, my brother and I played and studied and worked as one. He was less sturdy than I, and often unwell. I forgave him that. But his was a dreamer's nature, and he was given to wistful song, longings to travel, matters of the heart, the studies, I would say, the studies, the studies, the studies. If he came reluctantly to the work, still he came. We were strapped to the same yoke. Our desks stood side to side. When Wilhelm married, I joined his household. So of course, in death, we would travel together. Was I so foolish to believe that? But here I was, and Wilhelm was not to be found. I set out to look for him. I asked the dead if they had seen my brother but the dead who remain here are less numerous than you might imagine, two here, one there, that sort of thing. I met an ancient specter who, was now who now inhabited the kitchen space of a grand home where she had served as a maid. She had hollow eyes and a strange smile. I inquired of her, and she asked if my brother had been satisfied with his life. Yes, I said, of course. My brother was a romantic man, and his work, his wife, and his children had met all of his romantic expectations. For all of his days, he had been at ease with his life. Then maybe he has passed on, said the maid. Her hollow eyes stared fully at me. Very few do not pass on. It was she who explained to me that only the trouble troubled remain here in the Vishen Nuram. Those who are agitated and uneasy, still looking for what this maid and others since have called the thing undone. Vengeance, for example, she told me, and then eyeing me slyly, or some other unknown yet unmet desire. It is unique to every ghost, tailored to his own failures, disenchantments, or regrets. The dead maid set her hollow eyes on me. It all depends on you. These phrases, the thing undone, unknown yet unmet desire, 
have caused me lingering unrest. But allow me to speak now of the Zuishan Ram itself. Examine, if you will, the vibrating space around you, what is between and around your hands and your hearts and your homes. This is where I or another like me might be in the space between. Spectres are not, as often imagined, agents of physical change. We cannot move tables or cause knockings in walls. There is about us a slight drafting of warm air. Perhaps you have occasionally had one of us pass near you and feeling a subtle current of warmth, wondered what it was. With effort, we can use this drafting to move a paper or with greater concentration, perhaps even cause a door to swing closed. But more than that is beyond us. Here is what we can and cannot do in the Vishen Ram. We see but cannot touch. We, sell, we smell but cannot taste. We suffer but cannot weep. We hasten but cannot fly. We rest but cannot sleep. We speak but are not heard. So, and what of Jeremy Johnson Johnson who heard me? He was one of the exceptionals. Thank you.